Hello everyone, welcome to the commentary version of Razor Space Simulating Space Future 5. We have the Lynx spacecraft and the Kumo Lunar Lander heading on their way to the moon with four Kerbals inside the spacecraft right now. And we will see the Kumo Lunar Lander land on the surface near the other Kumo Lunar Lander that I, I had landed before. Two Kerbals will transfer from the new lander to the original lander and then use the original lander to go back to the spacecraft where the other two Kerbals will be waiting and everybody will go home. So it's Jeb, Shepgard, uh, Bob and Sirik, and Bo uh, Jeb and Shepgard are the ones who will land. And so there's the capture burn around the moon using Star Stage 3. Because of the placement of the lunar lander, it was a little bit off. I had to spin stabilize in order to keep things stable. The RL-10s on Star Stage 3 don't really gimbal that much. So that's what you saw there with the spinning. Now, somebody in the comments had asked why I'm landing the new lunar lander close to the old lunar lander. And the reason is because I'm doing all this with automated scripts with KOS. And I need to make sure that when we capture into orbit like this, into a new orbit around the moon, it's still above the landing site, but it's not really the same approach. It's at a different angle, different inclination. And I need to make sure that the KOS script, which is doing this automatically, can bring things close enough together so that we can establish a good base. In order to make a base, we need things to be within render range of each other, 2.25 kilometers, because I'm using simple logistics to transfer resources between different modules on the surface. And simple logistics only works if they're within 2.25 kilometers of each other. And so that's the goal. Everything should be within that range. And so this is just another test of that to see if we can do that. Now, why the Kerbals have to go from one to the other? I thought it would be an interesting thing to make sure that we can do it. After all, we do want the Kerbals to do surface operations and set up things, use their engineering skills to add parts to things if necessary, stuff like that. EVAing is important to us, and so having them transfer from one to the other demonstrates a very definite EVA capability, right? I mean, we don't have some random thing happening. We have a specific goal in mind, and so they're not just wandering around. And as it turns out, that became very valuable. I have Kerbalism in this install. I also have Dang It. I don't know why when I'm simulating these things and you guys don't even know about it, I have all these difficulty mods, but here we are. Uh, so I have Kerbalism and it turns out that when I EVA the Kerbals, uh, they, had, they started out with 100% CO2 in their suits. The suit scrubber worked, but it didn't work fast enough to like not kill them. So that was a bit of a problem. So we landed three kilometers away, which is not good. So the script is going to need some tweaking. That's an important thing to note. But it did land within one kilometer of the target coordinates. It's just that I targeted the original target coordinates instead of the other lander. But they should be landing within proximity of a central target. So anyway, here I moved the lander to 300 meters to the other one. So I personally landed it again, re-landed it, and that was necessary because otherwise they would die when trying to move from one to the other. So I have to figure out what's going on with Kerbalism where it starts them off with 100% CO2. It's not part of the resource list by the way, it's just part of Kerbalism's internal accounting. So I can't just use ship manifest to dump the CO2, I'll have to find some other solution. And I feel like I've had this problem before at some point, so I'll try to remember. But yes, so right now Kerbalism is actually preventing me from doing EVAs with them for long distances. This 300 meters was safe, anything too much longer than this would not have been safe. So here we are going up on the lander I previously landed in a completely automated fashion without Kerbals. And one other flaw with the new lander is actually that even though fuel priority was right with this one, for some reason, maybe because I pulled things apart and put them together again in some weird way, the fuel priority for that one was wrong, and the drop tanks had the same fuel priority as the lander itself. So when we dropped the drop tanks, we actually dropped too much fuel in them. And so it's a good thing we had this lander here. That would be, for the purposes of this particular series, something that I would probably revert on, because that's just a silly thing in the VAB, where it's just not keeping the fuel priority right when I rearrange things. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it, it turned out I didn't need to revert because of that, because we had this lander here anyway, I was planning to use it to bring them up, so it was okay. Uh, 
they would have been tight to bring them up with the other lander with the drop tanks having, having dropped more than they should have but possible in theory uh, I, I didn't want to test that out might have resorted to using their EVA packs for that and their EVA packs are not as good as they are in stock their EVA packs are using nitrogen now and don't have that kind of delta V so we do have to keep that in mind among other problems that they have on EVA. Anyway, so as the Lynx spacecraft drifts away from the moon here, the Lynx is again, as I said in the previous video, a sort of modified Orion spacecraft that's lighter. And the concept of it is that the cabin inside is actually a lander can. So you can use that as a lander can. And then it just has this tiled exterior to make it compatible for orbital re-entry. And so the internal cabin is perhaps a little bit smaller than the Orion internal cabin. And that's to make it lighter for the lander purposes when it's used for that. And it's really only meant for four people. So I made sure four people could be in there comfortably and didn't really design it for too much more. I believe Orion was originally meant for six people potentially. So it's a little bit bigger than, it, than is strictly necessary. So here we are coming back down. One problem here though was that once I started to roll it in order to put them into uh, heads down position so we don't skip out of the atmosphere, uh, it kept rolling. And I don't know why, but it might be a parachute imbalance between the two parachutes. Another problem was that we were landing in the middle of Tibet. Um, I, I just sort of tend to rely on the fact that there's a lot of ocean in the world and just go with it and don't think too much about the return trajectory. In this case, I probably should have planned a little bit better uh, but they survived and they all came back and there we have it so with that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time